Hey, hi, hi everyone. So indeed, I was lucky enough to work with Tobolov from 2010 till 2014. So it was obviously very interesting to work with, to work with him. Um, but I'm gonna show you actually. Well, actually, most of the games I'm gonna show you are actually from uh, from a long from a longer time ago. Um, yes, I was I was his second from 2010 to till 2014. But I'm going to show you all the games. Uh, you know, at the moment I was working with him. Well, he was still a very, very, very strong player. He won the Grand Prix, um, so he was not anyone but the top of from uh, well from let's say 15, 20 years ago um, was. Uh, was even stronger. So I'm going to show you some games from the past, and we're going to start with a, a victory of Kasparov, a game that I like very much. I I like to call this game the night dance. The night dance. You're you're going to understand why very soon. So Topolov was white. That game was played in uh, in was played in Amsterdam. Uh, well, maybe not Amsterdam, but in Netherlands at least in 1996. Uh, no, this is not from Vikonze, and in that game, um, Topolov is white. So that was that was a night or so typical opening. I mean, that's what Kasparov was playing all the time, but that's also what Topolov is playing most of the time. So uh, we we could expect an interesting theoretical debate. So no, it's not a game from two th from Elista 2006. That's uh, well, and that's also not against Kramnik. Although I'm going, uh, I might show you a game against Kramnik depending on the time we have, uh, but it would be a game from 2008. And then after all this, uh, all these things that happened between them in 2006. So here, Topolov picked Bishop C4. So the Sozin attack. Which is a very interesting weapon weapon against uh, most Sicilians. Um, nowadays, it is not as famous as moves like uh, f3, bishop e3, or bishop d5. And nowadays, I mean, Carlsen yesterday played queen d3 here. And uh, I mean, the knight of is such a good opening, they're destroying everything that they've tried. Now they're trying rogue d1 to play g4. I've even seen games with h4, and recently I've even seen rogue b1 and bishop d2 being played. So, okay. <laughs> um, the yeah, night of is full of, of theory, and everyone is desperate about finding ideas. But that game is from 25 years ago, and by then it was easier to find ideas because there were less games and the computers were not as strong. So, it was still possible in the night of to find some holes and to create create some problems in the opening. So bishop c4, which is, uh, well, so the Sozin attack, which uh, which is not supposed to bring white any advantage, but again, uh, 21 years, 20, um, 25 years ago, theory was uh, very different compared to now. So this is the main line. Knight bd7 is supposed to be the most solid variation with the idea to go pick up that very annoying bishop on b3. It's well known that bishop takes e6 here is a little too early, so white played f4, which is a main line. And since then, everybody was playing queen f3, which is a very natural move, just defending the e4 pawn and then castling. And uh, well, that, that was leading to complicated games. Uh, but in that game, Topalov decided to sacrifice the e4 pawn. So Black still has a choice. He may decide not to take on e4, but then, um, then it was a good decision from White not to play queen f3. Then, for example, to, the, the knight is still protected, so there could be ideas like e5, um, and after d5, the queen is not uh, attacking the knight anymore. Uh, perhaps f5 a little bit faster, or even g4. Uh, there could be a diff there could be many different ideas. Um, so, uh, wait, I'm having a strange 
thing appearing on my screen. Would you take the phone? I think this is. A, I put up a poll. Me. I just put up a fun little poll. That's 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 a that's a vote. What, what is that? Is it you, Greg? It's all the kids. They can vote on whether they would take the phone off or not. <laughs> okay. I'm just having fun. So most of uh, okay, most of you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, yeah, it's great fun. Okay, so let's leave it for one minute, no more. So twenty more, twenty two more seconds. Sure. They're voting. Oh, we can end it now. I'll just they would, fun. they would take the yeah. pawn. Yeah. Okay. So most of you guys, seventy percent of you guys, would not take the pawn. Um, well, actually, it is not bad to take the pawn. It is probably the best move, but it's very dangerous indeed. So Topalot now wants to open the position. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, Black has to play e5. You cannot afford to allow. Pawn takes e6, and then all the files would open the f file, the e file, um, and so on. So e5 is absolutely forced here, and queen h5 is a theoretical move. So it's threatening mate on f7. Mate, which uh, black has several ways to prevent. Uh, one of them is to protect with the queen. So, for example, with queen e7, which is a move Kasparov chose in the game. Um, D5 is probably the best, and it's actually, well, let's say that according to today's theory, this is the best move. Uh, by then, they were a little bit afraid of Rocky 1, since after, um, what is this? Since after Bishop C5, Rock takes C4, you cannot take the rook because of queen f7 mate and after bishop takes d4 check bishop is three that position was considered like very dangerous for for black uh, it has an extra exchange but f6 is coming so actually there was another game topal off against short in that position against niger short which uh, which actually topal off lost um but i think I mean, vision. I mean, visually, that looks quite interesting. That looks quite scary, I think, for Black. Um, uh, at least, this is something that they didn't like to play. Um, later, the engines showed that you can Black can play this sh short castle here, and Rook takes e5 is not possible because of Bishop d4 check. Um, although the position remains quite unclear. For example, Rook g4. Um, it was the idea to go bishop h6 and stuff like this, e4, pair up c3 and bishop h6. And there, there is actually quite some compensation for white. It's a very tricky game. Um, but let's say that according to the engine, it is fine for black. Um, Kasparov chose queen e7. And Topolov just went back with his queen. So why to provoke bishop uh, queen e7? Simply because it's going to make black's development much harder. Um, it would be much harder to go bishop e7 in castle because first black will have to remove his queen and now he has to solve the problem of the f6 of the e4 knight which uh, which is hanging and then black cannot take on d4 because after rock e1 there is no way to defend the, the e4 knight and then black would stay with a disastrous king on e8 so ed4 is not an option um, so Kasparov played the most logical move, knight to c5. Um, so black, well, definitely white has a lead in uh, development. On the other hand, well, he's quite solid. He wants, he's attacking the knight now, although, well, although you, you could consider sacrificing it since there would be a lot of counterplay on the e file, but still the knight is uh, probably hanging. And uh, Black also wants to take this very dangerous bishop on b3. So if Black can complete his uh, development uh, and eliminate that bishop from b3, it would be one extra pawn and uh, it might not be easy to prove enough compensation for, for White. Topolov here found a very elegant solution not to lose his knight and not to allow Black to exchange his c5 knight for the b3 bishop. So can one of you 
guys write to me uh, privately in the chat what he thinks Topolov played in that position to solve both problems at the same time. So I've got one correct answer already. <laughs> I haven't even started thinking. Man, so we gotta deal, we don't want to give up our bishop. So I would like to have more correct answers. We don't want to give up our knight. Rocky either. one uh, has been suggested, but that would not solve the problem of uh, the exchange of the b3 bishop. I'm not saying why it is lost if black can exchange that, that bishop on b3, but that's a piece we would like. I mean, the bishop has a very nice diagonal, that's a piece we would like to keep. Maybe bishop d5? So, but as I said, well, the move black like bishop d5 to keep the bishop, well, as I said, if black takes on d4, there will be a little bit of counterplay on the e5, but still I do believe that e d4 should be playable because then the king will run to c7, say king d8, king c7. I'm not sure that would be enough compensation. I know that in that position, the engine says that bishop e3 or bishop d2 are playable moves. Uh, bishop d2, because obviously you can't take on d4 because of rook e1. And bishop e3, e d4, just bishop d4. The engine wants to sacrifice and he's threatening rook e1, he's threatening f6. These are playable moves, but they do not solve the problem, the knight takes b3 problem. Um, knight c6 is possible. So Definitely many of you want to play knight c6, and after queen c7, so the first one who gave me... Uh, the correct answer was Arnav, so maybe you can unmute yourself and tell us what Topalov played. You do not have a microphone, so... Oh, yeah, no mic, I think. Someone else, so I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce your name. Um, so Aradia, 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 is it correct? Aradia. Aradia, okay. Well, yeah, not really. You can call me Addy. Well, yeah. Um. Well, I don't think I said knight c6. Knight c6, and after queen c7. Oh, he's saying that he didn't suggest knight to c6. Yeah. Oh, I thought he did. Just say you did Oh, it. <laughs> on move, you suggested the bishop d5, but on move one. So, oh, okay. who suggests? So, Alice. Alice. Do we pronounce, do we pronounce Alice in uh, Alice. there? We, that's the way we pronounce it in French. But. Oh, okay. Uh, so. My move was knight c6, and after queen c7, bishop d5. Yes, bishop excellent. Bishop. Excellent. So, this way, well... We're not saying that the game is over. Obviously, it remains very complicated. But Tobolov has managed to solve both issues. Um, he hasn't lost his knight, which, because, of course, if black takes it, then he's going to lose his rook. And he hasn't allowed black to exchange his c5 knight for the b3 bishop. So that's a first success. And, well, if white just manages, for example, say bishop d7, uh, if white just manages to remove the knight, um, the bishop on d5 is so strong that it's going to give white very strong compensation. And actually, the attack is not over. For example, imagine something like bishop e7, um, queen h5. Already here, the only move would be rook f8. Because if short castle, then rook f3 and rook h3 is coming. And... It's going to be basically impossible to defend against, uh, well, if h6, bishop takes h6 is coming. f6 is not even a legal move here. So, actually, the white attack here is extremely powerful. So that means white cannot castle short side. And if he cannot uh, short side, um, well, castle f6, well, May, maybe those offer some compensation, but I would take, let's say, with a bishop, and if rook f6, pawn takes, and then I'm going to, if bishop h6, king h8, I'm going to give you some material back, and that's not going to be, uh, let's say, that's not going to be a mate. But rook f3 and rook h3 is extremely powerful here. Uh, 
Anyway, in the game, Kasparov wanted to punish Topolov for playing for putting his pieces in such a strange uh, on such strange squares, and he decided to play a5 with the idea to take the last available square of the white knight and he simply wants to go bishop d7 and he wants to get this knight completely for free. So the situation is becoming dangerous for white who needs to find a solution with his knight. It would be an option to go let's say rook e1 and then free the d4 square for the knight but this is not what white wants. As you can see in the game Topolov is playing, I mean is always trying to push his pieces, uh, well, as close as possible to Kasparov's king. He's trying to deliver mates, so to bring the knight back to d4 is not exactly the plan here. So he found a very active way to stay in the, in the game, to stay in the attack, let's say. He played bishop g5, which is just freeing the d d8 square for the knight. And here Kasparov blundered. First we're going to see the end of the game, which is not very long, and then we're going to see what would have happened if Kasparov had played the critical move. So, in the game, Kasparov played rook a6. That was a very horrible move. Um, after knight d8, there was simply no solution for black. He played f6, and now simply knight f7 attacking the rook. And Actually, White is only a pawn down for this fantastic attack. Rook g8, and Topolov just went bishop e3. And Black is totally par paralyzed. He tried to play g6 to open the position a little bit, but after knight g5. And that's why I like to call that game the knight dance. Can you imagine that the g1 knight ended up on g5, but it didn't go through f3 to g5. It went through d4, c6, d8, f7, and then g5. That's not something you see every day and it's only around move 20. Let's have let's have a look what move. Yeah, exactly wow. move 20. That's definitely not something you see every day. And well, the g8 rook is hanging. Um, Kasparov tried rook g7 and after fg6 he couldn't afford to allow queen takes f6, so he took there bishop f7, and then he decided to sacrifice his queen, and although he, he managed to fight, I mean, it's only two pieces for the queen, so although there was still some work for, for white, and although Kasparov managed to play the position for another 40 moves, obviously in the end, white won. Um, well. That is not the most interesting thing in the game, except that, uh, well, thanks to this uh, finish, uh, I'm, I was able to make this very nice drawing uh, with the knight, and uh, <laughs> yeah, which I like very much. So, but still, uh, playing rook a6, uh, Kasparov made Topolov's life quite easy because knight d8 was obviously what White wanted to do when he played bishop g5. So bishop g5 was a clever move because f6 would lose instantly to queen h5 check. However, bishop d7 would definitely be critical here. Um, now d8 is under control and basically every square is under control. So now white has many candidate moves and I would like all of you, um, or at least most of you, to send me a private message and tell me what move you would like to play in that position with if you were white. Well, once again, we gotta save our knight here, huh? This knight d4 is always possible. Bringing the knight back. If it takes, we go rook a1 check and uh, open up the e file. Do we have a move other than knight d4? Hard to really see. C1. Bishop f7, king takes f7, queen d5 check, king e8. Seems to run out. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Have you read my book, Greg? No, which book? Because you suggested the right move, and that game is analyzed in my book, my 
my magic years with Topolov. I haven't read it and yet. You found the right move so quickly. Such an impressive move. That I was I was thinking I'm, about it before. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's that's the best move. Although it's only drawing, but black will, as we will see, black then has to find a lot of a lot of moves in order to in order not to lose. So many of you, okay, I got one suggestion, which was knight to d4. Uh, well, perhaps ed4 is a mistake. Indeed, after rocky one check, that looks uh, pretty terrible for black. Uh, but knight d4 is not threatening anything <laughs> particular. And then perhaps black would play, perhaps black would just play f6 and then run away with the king to d8, c8, and so on. So as I said, in the spirit of Topolov in that game, I mean, go, going backwards with his pieces was there was definitely not the plan in that game. Um, B4, well, B4, first of all, after AB4, that would also mean going backwards with a with knight. Um, also, it's quite unclear what would happen after B takes C6 then. I have got many of you suggesting bishop takes f7 check. That's mm, and yeah, and you know uh, I think that is the reason why Kasparov did not play bishop d7 because well rook a6 is such a bad move that uh, well if Kasparov played it and did not play bishop d7. Uh, the reason is that he was extremely afraid of something. And I believe that's something, but that's only my personal feeling. I believe he was extremely afraid of Bishop F7 check. But I can tell you that that position happened in another Grandmaster game. It was French Grandmaster Jean-Marc de Grave who got that position with White against a much weaker player. He got that position. He took an F7 and resigned with White two moves later. So Bishop F7, Indeed, that looks very scary for for black after king f7, queen h5, check king g8, f6. That looks very scary for black. But why is it not working? So bishop f7, queen, then queen h5, king g8, f6. And what did black play there? Hmm. Should be six. So Daniel. You can. You oh, can I, I'm mute. I'm going to unmute them. Yeah, funny enough, I thought bishop seven was correct for a long time, but I realize now just after what you said, bishop e8, and there's no f7. Bishop we don't have e8. any like checks. We just lose. And if knight e7 check? Uh, I think we just like queen takes, right? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. So that's what's actually. So bishop f7 was played. Uh, and after f6, it looks extremely. Scary, but the bishop after bishop e8, actually white had to resign because he cannot afford just losing another piece on c6. <laughs> now f7 is controlled enough times, and if knight f7, of course we are not going to be dumped. We are not going to take with the bishop and allow f7 check. We are going to take with the queen, and then bishop h5, and white can take everything on f8, but he's going to remain. Uh, a piece down. It's quite funny, by the way, that when you play bishop e8, suddenly it's actually the queen that becomes a very important defender. And then when you take on h5, so suddenly the rook comes back, comes into the action. Um, so that line is actually not working at all for white. And I, I truly believe that, well, I mean, rook a6 is such a mistake. I truly believe that bishop d7 um, the only reason I can see for for Kasparov not playing it is being afraid of uh, of Bishop F7, which is not working. Um, so only Greg so far offered me the, the the right move. There is another very logical move here for White, which uh, well, which just gives an unclear position, but nobody suggested it. I'm thinking F6. Queen H5 is not working no. Uh, because of bishop takes c6. Yeah, f6 was just, just suggested 
well, it was finally suggested, but that would just be unclear. F6, uh, G6, indeed now, of, of course I cannot take on C6 because after that my pawn on F7 would fall and I would have very, very serious problems. However, uh, after G6, Knight is 7, I would play something like Knight is 6. And at some point I would try to take there and play a 5 or something. And well, if you can keep that pawn on E7 forever, um, then I would rather pick white. But I'm afraid that this, well, for, yes, I, I agree, Ariane, this is a very crazy position. And any result is possible here. Uh, that's coming from an Eidorf, yes. Um, so that position would just be very unclear. So F6, de well, definitely, if that position had happened had happened over the board, um, Topolov would definitely consider playing F6, and maybe he would even play it. Um, but so can anyone? So I got actually a second good answer. So Aryan. Got it. One second. Uh, Aryan, unmuted. So Aryan, you gave a very interesting idea. Can you, can you I'm, talk? I'm trying to unmute Aryan, but it's not, it's not, it's not working. He can't, he can't talk. I think. So. Oh, I got, so someone else gave the line, so I'm not going to let you talk, Greg. No, never. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to tell someone else. Who is Daniel. it? Daniel, all right. That's fine. Um, 97, I guess, bishop takes, bishop takes, king takes, f6. Sorry. And I'm not sure what's going on, honestly. Like King D8, maybe FG7, Rook E8. I don't know. Yeah, that would be so. Knight E7. That that would be the best move in the position. Oh. So basically, the idea that is that if Black takes everything, then after F6 check, that's a very huge attack. Um, indeed. Um, well, actually, yeah, Queen F7 or Bishop F7, whatever. And uh, then g8 queen and white is going to stay with a lot of extra material. So this is just completely lost for uh, for black. So that's uh, that's the main idea of knight e7, that you cannot take it. I mean, when you sacrifice a piece, the first thing to look at is, uh, can my opponent take it, obviously. Um, the second question here to ask yourself when you play such a strange move like knight e7 is what happens if black plays f6. So how do we refute f6? Yeah, earlier if we took in queen d5, then I think black goes king e8. And then if f6, I think there was bishop e6 in that position. I was thinking about that too. This one, I don't know. I guess there's queen h5. So Anish, you close. Eight. You're just making a slight mistake in your line. Aryan, the, the first move is correct, but you need to give me the following moves. Alice, you're almost there, but the move order is wrong. Arian, you're almost there, but the move order is wrong. Hmm. Aradia, um, bishop takes f6. Queen h5. I'm gonna take. Indeed, if I don't take the knight, then uh, knight g6. But I'm gonna take it. Yes. So Anish, you're leading Viking Z today, so I think you should uh, have a right to, to talk in this. Uh... I think it's Ashish. Is that oh, <laughs> oh, did I misread? Maybe. Is it? Oh, he's Ashish. Ashish. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, my my. Apologies. It's all good. I'll, I'll unmute that. So you're almost leading Viking Z today, uh, but uh, at least you found the right the right variation. So. 
Um, yeah. Can you um, it yourself? Oh, I said um, queen h5, king, king e7. e7. Then first I looked at queen f7, king d8, bishop f6. But then he has like king c8, I guess. Yes. So I said bishop f6 first, then g f6, then queen f7. Then you like win the rook. Yes, exactly. All right, what was so the first check? Oh, you got it. Sorry, Greg, what did you say? I just couldn't follow the line exactly, but now I... I... So the line is queen h5 check, and okay, okay. indeed if you start with queen f7 and then bishop f6, black can run away with his king and is mm -hmm. probably fine. Uh, however, you can start with bishop f6 check. Black is not going to be crazy enough to take with the king. First of all, there should be a mate somewhere there. But the forced mate would be queen h4 check, forcing g5. And that's definitely going to be a mate somewhere soon. So black has to take with the pawn on f6. And then this position remains. It is not entirely lost, but it is a very bad position for black. Um, the h7 pawn is going to fall, then it's going to be... Uh, a rook and two pawns for two pieces, which, uh, materially speaking, is not too clear. But white has a very strong pawn on f6. He has a much safer, safer king. Um, that would definitely be a great position for white. Yeah, very interesting. Um, so f6 is... Uh, well, f6 is uh, one way not to lose com completely by force. Yes, as you were saying, Arian, strong bishop on d5. There is a reason why Topolov really wanted to keep it on the board. So, actually, the best move here for black is to take on e7. Oh, wow. Uh, but now, not king takes e7, because after f6 check, this is totally desperate. If black allows f6, it is going to be a very different uh, position compared to the one we saw when we played f6 and then put a knight on e7, because now we have a bishop on e7. That's very different. So let's say if black plays something like this, well, not threatening actually any special check, you just play f6 and g6, maybe even just king h1 or something like this. And this bishop on e7 is a monster because it is not like the knight uh, on e7 that we saw a few minutes ago that could, could be exchanged any moment uh, because there was a bishop on f8. And also the bishop is completely paralyzing the black king. So yes, I believe that white is, well, at least, well, maybe not completely winning, but uh, much better for sure because black is totally paralyzed. That's only a pawn. And you might now just play positionally, maybe rock d1 and try to get the, the d6 pawn or something. You So black cannot afford to allow a bishop on e7. That would be, that, that would be a most, um, just a murderous bishop as Ariane is saying. Um, so actually there is only one move for black here to hold the game, f6. Just preventing f6 and trapping the knight and trapping the bishop on e7. So threatening to basically win the game. If black can take on e7, obviously he's winning the game. Now queen h5, queen f7, the king is going to run away. That's not going to be enough. So white needs to be quick. Queen g4. That's an annoying move. Threatening queen takes g7. And here... Black has only one move to save the game, and then he gets an unclear position, probably around equal. Um, wow. All the rest is to totally and desperately lost for Black. So can you guys find the only move for Black to stay in the game? Oh. Mm. So g5 or g6 are no solutions because we're just going to take an f6 and that's going to be a disaster for 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 uh, for black. I can even tell you that g6, the engine is not taking an f6. The engine wants to play queen h4 
And in case of king e7, he goes fg6, is threatening g7, is threatening queen f6, and he claims this is even stronger than bishop takes f6. So yeah, I saw the right answer once, twice, three times. Okay, by the leader of uh, Vicon Z, this is no surprise, of course. Yes, Aryan, you can talk, you can talk. Uh, although, unfortunately, uh, your solution is not the correct one. So, so then you will pass. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to let somebody who has the right move talk. Maybe um, Yuvraj. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names, guys. Um, no, you pronounced it correctly. Thank you. Um, so my idea was to go bishop takes f5 for a double attack. Since um, if I take like the bishop with the king right now, then there's queen takes g7. So my plan was to take like move the bishop out of the way, so then I could take e7 with the queen. So actually, well, that's that's smart, but that's not or actually you gave me two answers. The first one was correct, not the second one. Bishop f5 is not a good move here because I will not take. Of course, if I take on f5. You go queen e7 and you control everything. But then I would take on g7, and you have a very serious problem with your rook on h8, which you basically cannot defend. So bishop f5 is a mistake. However, before you suggest bishop f5, you suggested the right move. Unless you have, unless you are two guys with the same name. No, just one person. No. It's one percent. So, what is the move you suggested before you suggest Bishop F five? I was also thinking Bishop E six because if Queen takes, as again, it clears to the way for the Bishop, and if Queen takes G seven, I can go Rook G eight. Exactly, Bishop E six only move, absolutely only move here, so that after Queen wow. G seven, Black can go Rook G eight. And then black yeah. would win the game, actually, because next would be bishop takes d5. Uh, so g7 is not possible to take after bishop a6. So white can play something like bishop takes, um, perhaps uh, take on d6 even, play something like that with the idea of rook d1. And well, that rook and ding, for example, should be about equal. We can attack that pawn. Black is going to attack that pawn. Perhaps play rook d8 first and then king e7. Um, that should be around equal. Uh, but black should find bishop b6. Uh, and then the game is unclear. I do not believe, I, well, I cannot believe for one second that uh, Kasparov did not play bishop d7 because he saw all these lines and could not find bishop b6. I strongly believe he was afraid of bishop f7. But anyway, uh, that that's complications that could have happened if uh, well, that could have happened at Black played uh, Bishop D7. So anyway, really a fascinating game, and uh, well, not every day you see Kasparov being crushed like this, playing his uh, beloved uh, Knight of Sicilian. So I particularly like like this game, and especially this Knight dance with this Knight ending to G5 on on move 20, going through d8 first um so i think a brilliant game by topolov i would have liked to see what would happen if if kasparov had played bishop d7 but maybe well maybe in a future game uh, we will see that position again who knows you, so let's switch to you yes know topolov was was he planning to play knight to e7 I have no idea. Well, no, that game is from nine. Actually, I could. Uh, actually, I should have asked him. I, I, actually, I could still ask him. Uh, I'm, I think he would probably think I, I'm a little bit crazy to ask him about this game <laughs> from 25 years ago because sure. he's a kind. I mean, I do not think he remembers. Simply, he would tell me, "How can you? How do you think I could remember something like that?" That's probably what he would say. But actually, uh, you brought a good a good point. Tomorrow, I'm going to to send him a WhatsApp message and I'm going to ask him. 
uh, because I'm, I'm showing this game is so many lectures. Actually, it would be very interesting to know. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps he still remembers, who knows? Per actually, perhaps that was still preparation. I, I have no idea because mm -hmm. I started working with him 14 years later. So who knows? OK, let's see another game, a quicker one this time, because we do not have that much time left. A victory against Ponomaryov. Uh, oh, no. With very nice mating ideas again. So the opening we do not care that much. That was, um, well, just a random opening. Roxy one, an interesting idea. So white is delaying bishop g2, and we will see in the game that actually it can be useful since in the end in that game the bishop did not develop to uh, g2. Um, so actually, the debate here is, I mean, black dreams of playing c6 and d5. If he gets this, then white has no advantage. Mm -hmm. However, white wants to react to c6 with e4, and he wants to, uh, he wants to, uh, and in case of d5, instead of c6, then he wants to play cd5 and ed5, and play this pawn structure, which is, a little bit better for white. And then he would play bishop g2 castle and we would have a normal game. Um, but in the game, Ponomaryov decided to play c6. So threatening, well, having the positional threat to play d5, so that after cd5, black can just play cd5 and completely equalize the game. So Topolov played e4. So Ariane, I agree that uh, when you play g3, you normally you need bishop g2. That's true in uh, that's true in 90 more than 95 percent of cases, perhaps 99 percent. But sometimes, sometimes there are exceptions. Like every rule, there is an exception. D5. Ponomaryov put his knight to e4. And here, Topolov decided that the right place for the bishop was d3. I'm not saying he would not prefer to have his pawn on g2 and not g3, uh, but he decided that having the pawn on g3 was not was not a good reason not to put the bishop on d3, when where after the knight disappears, he is going to have a very nice diagonal to attack the black king. Advanced French so he played bishop d3 here. The last square for the bishop. Knight takes c3 was played by Ponomaryov. So you could tell me that he could take the bishop here. On the other hand, that is not, that is a bad bishop for, for I mean, the central pawns are on dark, dark squares. So the dark squared bishop is not the bishop uh, White really cares about. And actually, there was a game between Van Vili and Kelsen. And Van Vili here after bishop b4 took on d4. There were many exchanges and the young Carlsen, because that game was from several years ago, um, at the time he was not even stronger than Van Vili, I think. So, I mean, not even stronger. Van Vili is a very strong player. Uh, but I think Carlsen <laughs> that even, well, did not even have 2700. At, at the, I, I can have a look, actually. Probably probably I have the rating somewhere there. Uh, so, Van Vili really 2655. Yeah. Poor Luke. <laughs> and Carlsen 2646. So... That was really long time ago. And actually white here had, a, as, had the C5 for free. So white was much better and won the game. Um, in that game, Ponomaryov decided to take on C3. Black, white took with the rook. He's not afraid of bishop before. He's just going to retract the rook and uh, he's happy to exchange dark squared bishops once again. Black reacted in the center with c5, which is a very natural reaction. Black took on c5. Black took back. And Topolov started an attack with h4. h4, good. With quite an obvious idea, which is, well, let's say, for example, if Black plays d4, then... Pop it. How are we continuing that game? What would Topolov play here? We yes, pop it Troy. H7. As soon as you play H4, you just take on H7. Always. Every time. Can you unmute yourself and uh, talk? Or Daniel, perhaps? Yeah, here. Why can you just put Bishop H7? 
Yeah, obviously bishop h7. That was the, the whole idea, the whole point of getting of putting the pawn to h4 without castling. Now if bishop g5, h g5 is checked and queen h5 is coming, that's going to be a terrible attack. This is not something black wants to ha to happen. So black has to do to do something against it. It is not in time to play a move like d4. Um, in the game, he played what looks looked like the most natural move. He played h6, and actually the best, according to the engine, was to play g6, which is very counterintuitive in my opinion because white wants to play h5. Um, you do not want to play g6 in that position, uh, but the engine thinks that that would give black the best chances to escape the game. After h6. Black had the huge problems after Topala found a very nice move here, bishop to b1. Oh boy. He wants queen c2, and there are many, many problems for black. I mean, these two bishops and these two diagonals, uh, they are, I mean, the threat, they're, they're, they're cre creating deadly threats. Queen c2 is already a deadly threat. You cannot move your g pawn because of bishop h6, also because of h5. F5, there will be EF6, and the queen is going to H7 anyway. So that's really going wrong for black here after bishop B1. Black played F5. Black played F5 in order to, well, in order to react and not just to get mated. So obviously, top of two can f6. He wants that. He wants that fabulous, fabulous diagonal to be open. Bishop f6, and obviously again. And you know that Topolov was very famous for sacrificing exchanges in uh, many, many, many positions, and that and sacrificing such an action like this one would definitely not making make him afraid. So obviously he continued with his attack, played queen c2. And that would be society here for, uh, for black to take that rook. After bishop c3, threatening check and take, um, say d4 to try to close the bishop, there, that position would be desperate for black. And a very nice winning continuation would be queen h7, queen g6, so if the black knight goes, if the black king goes to g8 back, then knight e5, just controlling f7 and queen h7 is coming again. And that's a disastrous, that, that's a disaster for black. So king is, king is seven and knight takes d4, very nice. Ooh. C takes d4, queen g7. If wow. king d6, just bishop b4. Rook f7, just bishop b4 as well. If king e8, queen g8. And white is actually going to collect all the material back and is even going to stay with uh, like two, three, or maybe four extra pawns plus an attack. So that's dead lost for, for black. <laughs> Talk about getting black did away. not take on c3, uh, which is a very wise decision because that bishop is a very important piece to defend the black king. However, it uh, remains that uh, white's attack is uh, extremely powerful here. Black played d4. So, of course, he's dreaming that Topolov is just going to move his rook to the only available square and going to close the diagonal and then the attack is over. But that is definitely not what... what Topolov wants to do. Here he played knight g5. Threatening mate in one. Yes, Troy, you got it. I'm not asking you guys too many questions because we do not have too much time left. So I'm going to ask you questions at crucial, uh, only very crucial moments. Knight g5, threatening mate in one. So black has to accept a gift. Hg5. Black two on c3. Here a winning variation would be simply rook h8 check, which black cannot take uh, because of queen h7. And white could do everything with checks. 
and that position would just be dead lost for for black white. Mm -hmm. he has an extra rook but uh white is threatening bishop e4 he's threatening queen f3 um the king cannot hide on b6 because of queen a5 that's like plus a lot for white that would be a win um perhaps top of well I'm not saying Topolov missed just uh, that variation, rock it shade, but he found a much more elegant way to win the game. Oh, wow. Um, so, what do you think Topolov played in that position if he Rick did H. not looks play rock it shade? Elegant to me. <laughs> Man, he found something else. So just send me private messages with your moves. You can go queen h7, bishop g6, king e7, gf, check. That looks pretty strong. I mean, doesn't feel super elegant. Queen so queen g6 and rook h8 is uh, actually white's dream. Uh, but now it would be a little too much because of queen d2, then queen d1, and bishop b7 check. And... Uh, Black would start collecting a little bit too many pieces. Mm. Yes, Troy, you got the bishop e three maybe. You got the right move. So can you unmute yourself and talk? Just a quiet move. We can just move our bishop first for bishop with a threat of rookie shader and g six. Yes. Was Bishop F4? Topol of played a very calm move. Not not a move you see every day in such a, well in wow. such a monstrous attack where every tempo counts, uh, where every tempo is so important. Topol of just plays Bishop F4, and he wants to go Queen G6 and Rook H8, and he does not want to allow Queen takes D2 check. So Bishop F4 <laughs> in black is facing a very big problem because Queen G6 and Rook H8 is a very deadly threat. That's oh, why yeah. black tried to escape with his king. Topolov gave a check. Another check. So now he starts collecting material back. But black still has an extra rook. Um, and it's not made yet. It feels like mate, but it is not mate yet. So how did Topolov finish off that game? What would you play if you were white here? Just send me as many answers as possible by pri private message. Hmm. Okay, weird, <laughs> weird position. Queen takes f7, queen takes g5. Queen f8 check. Queen e7. Kind of runs out. So I still didn't receive any answer. The moves are actually pretty simple, but they are tough to find because in that kind of position, you are actually not looking for simple moves. Yeah, That's queen exactly seven, the kind of position. Yes, seven? I've got one good answer, so try now. again. You can take an f7, which is pretty much forced. Queen takes g5 and rook to h7. Oh, that's what I said. five, and now you're right. They don't uh, have time to pick up our B1 bishop because we have um, for h7. And if they try to pick up our bishop, then we have queen c7 checkmate. Yes, exactly. So rook h7. Um, so, Greg, I've got a question. We've got a question in the chat. Um, if I have the possibility yeah. to run more polls of oh, myself, you can't, next time you I can't run them. I, he's talking about something else. We we did a whole class once that was all polls, nothing else. Ah, okay, okay. Um, right. And they had a lot of fun with that. All right. So maybe, maybe we'll try and do that again someday. 
<laughs> okay. So rock h7, and that's very powerful. It's threatening mate in one on c7. And it's allowing some checks, but black is not going anywhere with these checks because contrary to the other variation we saw before, uh, when there was queen takes d2, queen d1, and so on, black does not have bishop b7 check because the square is protected. And there are no more checks there. And queen c7 cannot be avoided at all. Um, so in order to Surprising prevent uh, the direct mate, black played queen e5 and then king c6. Uh, but then it was quite easy for white to finish off the game. First, he should be e4. Oh. Moved his queen to the mm, to the best possible square d8, and now a deviation sacrifice with bishop e4 check, forcing the black queen away, and queen c7 made is uh, the next move. So that was, uh, I think, uh, also quite an impressive game by by to, by Topalov. Um, well, that's uh, that's one. That's also one of the. I mean, when when uh, when when I was asked to pull by top of to be second, I mean, to be the second of such a, an incredible attacking player, I mean, I felt uh, so lucky, obviously. And I can tell you that these games that we saw are very similar to the training sessions that we had, because in every position he would try to play h4, g4, he would try to sacrifice something. Um, and many times, many actually, even from 2010 till the 2014, when the engines were already quite strong, we found a few of these ideas and did, and it did bring, bring total of a few points or at least some, some big advantages sometimes. Uh, this is, I mean, this is typical total of, uh, he likes to sacrifice and he also likes to believe that chess is not. Is, well, well, chess is maybe a science when you study it at home, but when you're playing over the board, he really considers it a sport and he believes that if he makes his opponent's position difficult to play, uh, he doesn't care about being worse. If he thinks that his opponent has very high chances to blunder, then he's going to do it. Then he's going to go for it um, simply because he believes in practical chances and he does not believe that a human can find the same moves as a computer can find. And he's completely right. And that's why he was such a top player uh, when engines were not so strong. Well, reason number one, he was a bit younger, obviously. But reason number two is that nowadays, chess engines, they're kind of cleaning every opening. Uh, but by then he had a lot of uh, much more, I mean, the margin to express himself, to, uh, to let's say, express his uh, <laughs> talent uh, in the opening was uh, much, uh, was much bigger than now because there, were, there was a lot, of, a, lot, a lot more room for novelties, for sacrifices and so on. And that's what made Topolov uh, who he was. So actually a world champion in 2005. Um, so I had planned, actually had selected five games. We only had time to analyze two, um, but I think it was interesting to to see them in uh, details. And uh, I think we saw quite many interesting var variations. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture. And well, do you have any question? <laughs> 